So, how would you collect money? Let's start. We, we're talking invoicing and debt collection today. How would you? How, what sort of processes would you have for the for the, for, the, for collecting money from the clients? I'm sort of thinking. I uh, here are you seeing more firms using standing orders, direct debits, Visa, Mastercard, because that seems to be what I'm finding is more prevalent here, again yeah. with my clients. All of the above, Ian. But let's take a step back. For those of us who are old enough to remember and have the relationship with clients that goes back to strong levels of trust, we can still get away with those clients where you just invoice them, they pay by return of post, and I'm not sure that anyone's got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But undoubtedly, the newer clients coming in, the newer businesses, the business where 35-year-olds, 40-year-olds are the entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they're not willing to put up with that anymore. That was fine 20 years ago. And so for those of you that are now 60, there is an argument which I'm willing, more than willing to take on board and say, absolutely, don't change it. We're really thinking about the future of the business looking forward. And so the thing about standing orders, credit cards, direct debits, if you can get them. Um, some companies offer like premium credit, they offer a service. Yes, premium credit seems to be getting, again, more popular as the client, economic climate has changed. It's, it's, it's very much a good idea to um, get the client to actually sign the premium credit form before, they, yeah. um, before, before the work's done. Well, my, absolutely. And um, again, my recollection going back in time, it's always useful to see how it comes through, is that we all thought it would be for the bad paying clients that mm -hmm. would sign this loan agreement with mm -hmm. people like premium credit. The accounting firms gets the money immediately. They guarantee the money. So if the client defaults on the loan mm -hmm. repayments, mm -hmm. the accountant's got to pay it back or the bit that's outstanding. What we've now worked out over the last two or three years, even when times were great, the better clients are more than willing to sign up these short-term loans. Mm -hmm. So if we have a credit controller, I would arm her with standing orders, direct debits, credit cards, premium credit type facilities, uh, post-dated checks, anything to get the clients to mm. cough up. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, as money is getting quite short and we just need to read the press every day, money is getting increasingly tight, we need to be on top of this and use all of those tools really to our advantage. To make sure that the client has as many options to pay as possible. Well, absolutely, as many options. And we'll, we'll talk later about the frequency of bills and the size of bills, but that is clearly correlated. If I sent you a bill for 10 grand, you're going to struggle more with that than if I sent you three bills for three grand. Yes, so, absolutely. You know, smaller pills are easier to swallow. Right, so I that, think the no surprises rules on bills uh, works. You should always really talk to the client, you know, before and uh, during and after the process you're doing. Well, that comes back to your point about setting expectations. Mm -hmm. you know, this is what I propose to bill you, and this is when I propose to bill mm -hmm. you, so that that all gets sorted out before we get too too bogged down with the relationship. A number of my clients, they have systems now where the fee earner, if they're doing a set of accounts or a tax return, will ring the client up before they start work to set an expectation of delivery date Yes. and say, you know, it's going to take me five days, knowing it'll take maybe four, give themselves just in case time, and they'll ring the client up through halfway through the process or towards the end of the process and again before the job is sent to the, the client for approval. Three phone calls for every every time they prepare a set of accounts or a tax return. Well, since you gave me that idea two or three months ago, I've been handing that out to my guys uh, and the feedback has been exceptional. Mm -hmm. People are finding the clients are much more grateful. They value the service. You and I both know the service is exactly the same in terms of the tax return. The tax return the, on the accounts. That hasn't changed really. But the client says, well, thank you very much for keeping me posted. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's, it's one of the things that I would ask anyone on a job to say is pick up the phone to the client and give them some sort of time scale so that the bills come in the same and they can plan for it. And, of course, the, the level of service is higher if you're putting the personal touch in. I've just given you a courtesy call to let you know that is a sort of phrase that's it's worth a lot of money. So what about actually getting the time, the time down and time recording <coughs> and monitoring? How do we... How do we tighten up on that a bit these days? Well, uh, um, I think my view is that we've got to try and understand why we are where we are today in order to work out where we should be, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So a lot of firms are on weekly timesheets, even fewer and fortnightly and even fewer and monthly. But that was an era that has now long gone. And so we're seeing the recognition how is up for debate, but if you go to at least daily timesheets 
or preferably, preferably real-time time recording, then what you see is that more hours are being genuinely recorded against the correct client for the right amount of time. Which are the three key things with time recording. That's the key, to record the truth. Mm -hmm. But, and it's a massive but that is still around today, many, many partners and managers get so upset about the write-offs and the recovery levels that people don't record the entire truth for fear that they're going to get jumped on by their manager or partner for breaking the budgets. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly the wrong way around. We should get everything that we've done on the, on the sheet first. Got to get the truth down. Absolutely. You know, and, I, and I'm sure many of us will remember how on earth could so-and-so last you have done it in that shorter time. You know, maybe I'm sure. We've stupid. all had that one. Yeah, we've all had that one. So you basically His last year's file, Bon Voyage. Yeah. <laughs> so you took the, weeks. took the file home. Yeah. Did it in your lunch hour, put yeah. it down to admin, anything but the truth yeah. to try and make sure that you weren't going to get a ticking off by the powers that be that you're going to break budget. So, what we find is to try and break that culture, we issue an amnesty on the timesheets. Mm -hmm. So, we say, you just record the truth, and I promise you, we will never jump on you again for breaking budget as long as you apply what we, you and I call the 30% budget rule. Yes. So as soon as you know you're slipping on your budgets, you must tell the manager or the partner, who in turn can then go to the client. If it's their fault, you know, if the client's records aren't what they're supposed to be, yep. um, and try and change the Stop price. and go auditing or stop and go accounting, it's called by some of the larger firms. Absolutely. And you just stop and then go talk to the client. Go and talk to the client. I've got one, one of my clients has got actually um, a big sign in their office that says record the truth, exclamation mark, just for that one purpose. Because if you've got the truth down on the sheet, at least you can then work from there. Well, then you're honest with yourselves. So we, 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 we're, we're big fans at the moment of obviously real-time, daily timesheets. Yes, very much. And then somebody reviewing them in the morning? Well, daily yes. Review. I think supervision is the key to almost everything we do, including time recording. So we don't want an office rottweiler to actually go through the sheets to make sure that A, they are complete, and B, to review admin time, non-chargeable yeah. time. And the non-chargeable time, admin, and the likes, what we've liberally called the black hole of the profession, mm -hmm. That must disappear. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. rubbish. I just cannot get my head around why so many hours of admin have historically been put to admin. Mm -hmm. But when you speak to uh, fee owners, they say things like, well, there was a filing, there was invoicing, there was a bit of debt collection, there was a bit of training on the job. Uh, it, it just goes on and on and on. Most of which, albeit not necessarily billable, you know, that might have to write it off, is definitely chargeable. Mm -hmm. So, Consistency is the next thing. So if you and I were partners and we had a client of say a thousand pounds each and we both went off separately to play golf, I might record that as marketing and we can all understand why. But when we get to the end of my year and I see a thousand work in progress, I have a hundred percent recovery, you, for different reasons, say recorded it as a chargeable activity. So mm -hmm. at the end of your year you've got seventeen hundred in work in progress because you put seven hundred pounds down to playing golf. Obviously you write that off. So the bill's the same, we mm -hmm. both played golf, but now you've got a big write-off and I don't. Mm -hmm. So if we're not careful, we'll be looking at your clients and saying, well, they're not very profitable. Mm -hmm. So the consistency of recording and how people record is very essential in today's climate. crucial. And the golden rule on consistency, if it smells of a client, charge it. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily recover it. But if we all charge it, then we now have a level playing field to say. I think a lot, a lot of firms we, we've seen recently are sitting down with all their fee owners and actually saying, this is how we're going to record it. Absolutely. And we, a bit of training, a bit of education, I think is important at the moment, right? Essential. Because if you don't sit with people, how are they supposed to know?